Hello everyone and welcome to our DQ&A webinar um, today on the topic Displaying Video 360 versus Google Display Network. Um, I'm Fabian and with me I've got my colleague Daniel who is going to present the topic to you guys. Um, if you've got any questions you've got the chance to type them in the chat. Um, please be aware that we'll only answer the questions after uh, the presentation has been done so please stick around and now enjoy the presentation. Thanks for the intro, uh, Fabian. And uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. My name is Daniel. I am a digital consultant at uh, DQA. Uh, and today I will uh, take you through some of uh, the topics we've lined up for uh, the DV260 versus GDN comparison. That's mainly what uh, we will, will be focusing on today. Uh, we will, throughout the presentation, give you uh, insight on the, the, the platform features. Um, and then we will be giving you some ideas on use cases, things that we've seen uh, in the market, but also some, uh, yeah, some cases from uh, a few of our clients. Um, uh, and then we'll take you through th some of the considerations if you're thinking about uh, yeah, either using DV uh, or you want to use both platforms, for example. Uh, there's, uh, there's plenty of things to take into account before you, you dive into it, uh, closing off with uh, FAQ and some Q&A at the end. All right. So we've already introduced ourselves. So uh, if there's any topic that you would like to uh, further discuss, feel free to drop us an email so we can have that conversation separately. All right. So first I'll take you through DV360. And so, DV360 enables you to, uh, first of all, access high value inventory, reach your audience and drive performance through automations. I uh, usually take this slide because uh, I feel that these are the three pillars that the system is based upon. Um, whereas if we ha have a look at the first one, um, you're talking about accessing inventory that's uh, a premium. Uh, well, we'll talk, we're talking about having set, uh, uh, setting up features that, for example, um, yeah, imagine a, a billboard on a, on a premium uh, news site, for example, something you can definitely set up through DV360, and there's multiple ways to do it. Um, there's, there's various ways of, of buying that inventory, uh, whereas there's private auction, there's programmatic guaranteed nowadays, uh, preferred deals, so there's various ways of, of, of getting that inventory that you want which is a, a premium and um, yeah. Uh, the second pillar is reaching your audience uh, as there's plenty of data going around and, and, and connected to uh, DV360. We're talking obviously about uh, Google's data. So think about uh, Affinity, uh, Custom Intent, all those audiences that are connected already, uh, which are uh, uh, yeah, uh, tapped in by, uh, by Google. Um, next to that, you have your first party data integrated. So for example, website data, uh, potentially your CRM lists, for example. Um, and there's also third party uh, data uh, segments uh, connected that you can also use to uh, uh, activate them in your campaigns. Um, the last pillar is automation, as mentioned. Google's making uh, uh, lots of efforts to, uh, yeah, actually power that, uh, uh, powered by that machine learning to, uh, uh, to have your campaigns uh, to, to be automated in, uh, uh, um, to, to actually perform in an automated way. Uh, so that's uh, definitely something that has, uh, yeah, received lots of attention uh, in, in, in the last couple of months. So if we're looking about the, uh, looking at the first pillar, uh, so accessing uh, yeah, premium inventory, these are some of the, uh, yeah, some of the uh, uh, SSPs that are connected to um, DV360. First of all, you can uh, access Google Ad Manager inventory. Uh, you can access GDN uh, and YouTube. Um, but on top of that, you get access to lots of other inventory that you um, yeah, cannot get access to uh, when you're working in, in GDN, uh, or when you're working in Google Ads with GDN solely. Um, so definitely good to mention here is that when you're using uh, GDN, 
uh, you usually, uh, yeah, you have a direct connection of getting uh, your inventory, whereas in DV, you're trying to, um, yeah, you're dealing with a whole chain of, uh, yeah, platforms that are in between. Imagine the flow of a buyer working with a DSP has to connect through an, ex through an exchange uh, with a publisher using an SSP on his side. So there's various platforms in between that make it possible that you can uh, bid on that uh, impression. So it's good to uh, get a sense of that uh, yeah, difference in, in, in terms of how the buying process works. Right, audience data. Definitely, uh, I find it's always a very interesting topic because there's so much data going around that you can, yeah, that you can use to um, to activate it in your campaigns. Uh, some of this uh, is also available in GDN. Uh, it's good to uh, to make a note of that. Uh, some of you might already be familiar with that. Uh, if we look at Google Audiences, for example, which is uh, yeah reaching people based on their interest. Uh, how, so how they serve the web, things like demographics. Uh, I've, gave you, I've given you some examples like uh, Google Affinity in market, uh, custom intent uh, and demographic. Uh, this is something that you can access in, in GDN as well. Um, then first party data, uh, by looking at, uh, looking at this example, um, yeah, you're reaching people that have visited your site or for example, have viewed your content uh, if we're looking at, uh, yeah, um, uh, if you want to store users that have had an engagement with your true view video, for example. Um, so there's various examples given here, um, uh, like YouTube remarketing, CRM data, also GA360 remarketing list, something we'll, we'll, we'll have an example on that later on. Um, second party data. Now this is something that's interesting that comes with uh, DV360. Um, let's say you're setting up these premium deals that we were talking about. Uh, what you can do is actually talk to a publisher and let's say you want to set up a deal with Telegraph. Um, you, can, you can have that conversation with them and tell them like, hey, I'm interested in uh, gamers. Uh, let's say I'm a, I'm, I'm a, a company that sells uh, uh, games. Um, you can have the publisher set up that deal uh, and connect data from their side to that deal so that, so that you also include, yeah, imagine like your affinity targeting, but then on the publisher side. Uh, this, this makes it really interesting to um, uh, sort of enrich in your deals that you set up with publishers. Um, third party data, as mentioned, there's plenty of providers connected to, uh, to DV360. This is also something that's uh, yeah, exclusive to DV. Um, yeah, there's there's providers like Visual DNA, Exalate, Blue Kai is a yeah a somewhat famous one as well that's connected. All right, there's some additional targeting features available in DV. Um, some of them are available in GDN. Uh, if we look at the first one, uh, that that one is not yet available in in GDN, which is technology targeting. Now, for some advertisers, uh, it, it makes a lot of sense to, uh, to use it. Uh, imagine telcos, for example, if they want to, uh, to bid on uh, um, uh, yeah, competing ISPs, for example, uh, or want to uh, test something using a, a various uh, a connecting, uh, connection speed. I think generally for most advertisers, um, uh, yeah, it's it's pretty straightforward. It doesn't mean that that, that you need to uh, uh, to use it. Uh, there's contextual targeting, something that's been there for quite some time now. Uh, so showing ads based on uh, 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 yeah a context context that's relevant to your content and your brand. Uh, category targeting, which is basically uh, uh, targeting on verticals. And of course, geo-targeting, something that's been there for a while, but is enriched, uh, is enriched by, for example, proximity targeting. Uh, so imagine you have a local shop and you want to do something with people that are in the vicinity of that local shop to have them uh, yeah, uh, coming into your shop because you have a, a promo for, for users that are in the neighborhood, for example. There's some, some fun things that you can do to, to play around with that. Uh, and then automation, always a nice topic. There's plenty of, of algorithms in uh, uh, DV that you can uh, that you can use uh, for further 
um, optimizing your campaign. So this is basically giving giving the uh, yeah uh, the, the system its, its freedom be, by uh, using its its machine learning to optimize your campaigns. Um, yeah, a few familiar ones are uh, optimizing on CPC, on CPA, been there for quite some time now. Uh, but recently, a few nice ones have been added to the list. Uh, so maximizing video quality, uh, view of impressions, also a really valuable one for uh, your branding campaigns. Um, and there's custom algorithms in there as well. So if you have if you, if you have a particular need and you want to make a certain combination, uh, it's it, it's it's nice to uh, to explore that one as well. All right. So GDN, um, let's dive right into it. <clears throat> so GDN enables you to um, buy in a different uh, fashion. If you like, so um, yeah, if uh, you can still bid on CPM as well as you would do in DV360, uh, but currently you can also uh, in GDN bid based on a CPC model. Uh, I'll, I have a side note on this, but I'll get back to that uh, later. Um, another uh, yeah strong pillar of GDN is that its its ease of setup is familiar familiar among users. So um, I think for people that have uh, played around with GDN uh, in, in the past or still do, uh, they, they know that it's, it's quite straightforward to set up a campaign. Uh, as as, as I, uh, I've explained here, you can set up a campaign in minutes using uh, what, they, what they call uh, smart display campaigns, uh, something that's definitely uh, uh, worthwhile to, uh, to test. Um, what's also interesting is there's no additional platform fees. Um, and the last point is automation. Now, looking at DV360, I've mentioned automation. That doesn't necessarily mean that the, um, Google Ads and GDN is falling behind in automation. Definitely not. There's plenty of levers you can pull to uh, have your campaign uh, optimize on, uh, uh, yeah, through machine learning. You can, for example, set your campaign to target a certain uh, ROAS. Uh, you can also use bid adjustments that can get really granular if you want to segment, for example, on location or device. So that's, I think, uh, also something that's nice to play around with. Now, looking at the comparison of, of, of their features. So starting from top down, um, looking at GDN first. So obviously, as mentioned, Google audiences and first party audiences are in there. Um, looking at DV360. On top of that, so you have uh, you have Google audiences definitely, but there's also first, second, and third party audiences. Uh, I've touched on these uh, briefly earlier. So second party audience, uh, something that you get from a publisher by setting up a deal, something the data that comes from their side that you can use to activate, uh, and third party audience data. Um, uh, I've put in advanced first party audience measurement uh, because, well, DV360 is uh, fueled by uh, floodlight tags. That's what they call the pixels that, that go around the platform. And you can get really uh, yeah, granular with, with segmentation because in the floodlight tag, you can also uh, have it capture uh, extra parameters, so extra fields that enrich in your tag. So every time it fires on a page, uh, let's take the example of, a, of an e-commerce uh, site. Uh, user lands in the shop, uh, looks at a red code, 100 euros. You can have that floodlight tag um, uh, capture that it's 100 euros and it's a red code, for example. So it's it gives you lots of extra uh, extra parameters, extra information. Um, inventory. Well, as said. Um, in uh, DV360, you can access lots of high value inventory. Uh, that's that's on a wider network, so not just Google inventory. Uh, and when we look at GDN, for example, um, yeah, take into consideration that um, uh, that it's it's not uh, on 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 the top of the of the list of the um, uh, of the publishers that are that are selling their inventory. So uh, that's why I've put in. It has mixed levels of quality, so it hasn't. It, it, it doesn't necessarily have to be uh, of low quality. 
but it's good to consider that it, there's mixed levels of quality in there. Um, especially when you use GDN a lot for your performance campaigns, you're gonna want to optimize on a certain CPC or a certain CPA. Um, so in that sense, it will look, um, uh, it will drive your campaign towards that. Um, uh, not taking into account that much the quality of the inventory that it's being served. Um, so, uh, next point is Google integrations. So, obviously, uh, since it's both Google products, uh, they are definitely uh, uh, easily integrated. Uh, it's just there's some differences with the two. Um, Google Display uh, Network, well, the, the stuff you do in uh, GDN is uh, you do that from within Google Ads, right? Uh, and you have some, uh, yeah, it's, so it's easily integrated with Google Analytics and it can be integrated with CM, but then uh, bear in mind that you'd have to use, uh, for example, click trackers to, to, to do that. Um, for DV, it's natively integrated with Campaign Manager. So if you're using that, uh, can definitely give you some extra uh, insights through the through its reporting, uh, attribution, trafficking. There's there's lots of uh, benefits that, that come with that. Um, and in terms of targeting, there's a few differences. Um, so some of them we're all, we've we've already covered uh, briefly. Uh, so in GDN, audience and content targeting, whereas uh, in DV you have audience content. Uh, and some additional targeting capabilities like technology, as mentioned. Um, in terms of creatives, well, there's templated creatives and HTML and GDN. Uh, in TV360, there's rich media, HTML5, and some new creative formats, like, for example, native ads uh, and audio ads. Uh, so it's, yeah, it's good to give you that, that sort of picture of, of how do these two platforms uh, compare with one another. Uh, I've touched on some topics in this slide that I will uh, get back to uh, uh, further into the deck. So let's, uh, let's continue. Let's go through some of the use cases. So things that we've, um, that we've heard uh, in, in the market or uh, things that, uh, yeah, we've heard from, from clients or any of that. So the first one, so the first use case is a, I, I'm using DV360, but I'm using it for my uh, upper funnel campaigns, so my top and mid funnel campaigns, but I'm still doing my low funnel activity in GDN. So that's something that's, uh, uh, yeah, that's fine. I mean, if that works for you, you're doing your performance campaigns in GDN. Uh, it, it can definitely make sense for your brand. So I'm not saying that this should apply to, to, to anyone, to everyone. Uh, so you can definitely use it for, uh, for example, when we talk about upper funnel for your uh, video campaigns, your, your audio, uh, your, the premium deals that, that you have with certain publishers, certain A-list publishers that can give you access to inventory that you would otherwise uh, uh, never get through GDN. Uh, and then there's plenty of like mid funnel activities that you can run as well on DV. Uh, so imagine the native ads that are uh, now integrated in uh, in DV360. Uh, it's definitely a way to go. Well, um, yeah, if if for example you you are you have an always on layer, uh, a remarketing layer in GDN, and that's been running for quite a while, um, I can also imagine that you have certain yeah, sales. Uh, targets, you have certain CPAs that you are used to getting. Um, so there's, let's say you're, you're saying, I want to transfer everything to, to DV360. You want to hold the, the top mid and low funnel in DV. Um, yeah, bear in mind that uh, you, yeah, you need to consider since you're trying to uh, uh, um, win, uh, or you're trying to get uh, inventory that is, that is as explained with mixed levels of quality, you have a certain performance target. It's likely, uh, it's possible that you will not get that same uh, that same target in DV when you're trying to shift everything towards that. Um, so yeah, it, it it really depends on your situation, obviously. Some considerations I've put in here is frequency capping, uh, and if it's relevant for you, like if you if you want to explore that avenue, you can uh, look into using dynamic creators for your uh, top and mid funnel layer as well. So you can serve uh, creatives tailored to uh, an audience you're trying to target in, in, in those layers. So something to, uh, to consider. The next 
case is extension. So imagine, as said, you want to buy a particular premium inventory to uh, um, a publisher. Uh, so something as mentioned that you otherwise would never reach through GDN, uh, then that's also a way to go. Um, uh, a consideration here is frequency capping as well. Uh, as you're still working into different platforms, uh, it's always good to um, yeah, have, a, have one single source of truth where you're uh, at, at least measuring things in there so that when you're trying to report, you run attribution reports, uh, you're de you want to deduplicate conversion, for example, uh, it, it's definitely uh, a smart thing to, to, to be able to frequency cap. You're not going to be able to, to manage that, that frequency across those different platforms, but you can monitor it and you can report on it. So that, that's, that's quite important here. All right. Next use case. So um, imagine this one uh, using low funnel uh, strategies in DV360, whereas you're still using uh, prospecting campaigns in GDN. This is also a way to go, right? So uh, this is, and, and this is my uh, remark with this one, my side note actually, um, is not necessarily a way to go that I would recommend. But imagine you really want to uh, work with Google Creative Studio uh, and you really want to have uh, dynamic creatives in place. Uh, you want to benefit from quite an extensive remarketing setup and you want to be able to serve them uh, to users in your audience list, uh, but through a wide network of exchanges. So not just the Google Ad Manager. You want to make sure that you expand your, 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 uh, your chance to uh, be able to hit those users uh, quite a lot, substantially. All right, then let's look at the considerations, right? Because that's what matters as well when you are uh, considering whether, hey, do I need to use GDN? Do I need to div uh, use DV? Can I use both or uh, what's, uh, yeah, what should I do basically? So uh, obviously I don't have the golden answer that's going to fit uh, everyone's need, but I do have some considerations lined up when you're uh, exploring that. The first one is uh, considerations based on media budget and brand ambitions. So this is about um, uh, looking at your own situation. Am I, for example, in GDN now spending over 10K per month? And this is just a ballpark number. Uh, don't take me on that number uh, specifically. Uh, but this is just to give you an indication. Like if your spend is substantially and you're running uh, display, you're running video, for example, lots of YouTube campaigns in GDN already, uh, and your brand has the ambition to, to grow by claiming a stronger digital presence. Uh, when you're, um, yeah, you're looking into um, more into that upper and mid funnel, uh, uh, more in those upper mid, uh, upper mid funnel strategies, then DV might definitely be something for your brand to look into. All right. Then there's considerations based on inventory, something we touched on a little bit as well. Uh, so um, yeah, as said, if you're interested in more premium inventory, that's, that's particularly interesting for your brand and it's not yet available in GDN, then this is something you can definitely explore. Uh, think about some of the publishers, some of the inventory that you would want to get. Uh, and if it makes sense uh, to, to, to be able to, yeah, upgrade yourself to, uh, to a platform, to be able to do that, to be able to buy that inventory. Next one is considerations based on creative. Now I've touched on creative. I said dynamic creatives a couple of times. Uh, this is something that you can do with Google Creative Studio. And uh, this is, yeah, generally for, uh, yeah, people out there that want to up their game on creatives by, uh, yeah, using dynamic creatives on, on each phase of the customer journey. Now, what happens a lot is that uh, usually uh, people step in with uh, dynamic creatives in, in the low funnel strategies. So uh, usually for, for that dynamic remarketing. But this is something that, uh, yeah, you can do that. You can roll that out uh, for top, mid, and low funnel strategies, actually. Uh, you can connect that to different uh, audience lists. 
uh, yeah, it doesn't necessarily have to be remarketing. That's so that's the point. And the thing is, is that uh, as I, as I said, you have the fl the floodlight tank fueling this all. Um, you you fill in the parameters in that fl floodlight tank. Uh, and the nice thing about it is that you can use all those parameters to make a very granular uh, segmentation. Uh, so you can use that in studio as well to be able to serve um, uh, a creative tailored to that specific user. So that might also be something that uh, an important consideration for moving towards DV because Google Creative Studio, uh, it is connected to DV 360, uh, but it's not connected uh, in, in, in that way with GDN. Then the final consideration I've put in this list is media consolidation. Obviously something that uh, is, is very important. If you're gonna want to, uh, yeah, if, if you're looking into onboarding DV360 uh, and you want to be able to run campaigns there, um, at, at least consider that, for example, the TrueView campaigns you used to run in, in, in Google Ads, the Gmail Ads campaigns, the, uh, for example, text ads you used to run, uh, think about, uh, yeah, having that uh, in into one platform it just make makes your life easier. Otherwise, uh, yeah, you, you're going to have to. If, as said, you want to frequency cap, uh, you want to monitor that that frequency cap across those two platforms. You'd have to have something like campaign manager in between. Um, uh, yeah, facilitating that process basically. So. Um, yeah, as this illustration shows, you can really benefit from uh, from having all uh, yeah in one package basically. All right. So FAQs. Now I've lined up a couple of things. I was I was looking for this uh, because we this is this is a topic that is widely discussed. It's been this discussion has been there for quite some time. <laughs> so uh, the nice. Thing is, is that we we are able to gather some things uh, over time, some questions that we we get, uh, some things that we see are being discussed, and, and, and um, yeah, let's let's dive into it. So first one is on creatives. Uh, so can I use dynamic creatives in Google Ads for GDN campaigns? Well, yes, you can. Uh, in this case, they're called responsive display ads. Um, I think I've I've touched on this topic. Uh, in the, in the slide where I was mentioning creatives uh, through uh, Creative Studio, Google Studio. Um, now, a difference there is that, well, these responsive display ads, uh, you can set them up within GDN, whereas uh, the, the, the work that you do uh, in Google Creative Studio, uh, that's something that you, that you can do specifically for DV360. So you can run dynamic creatives, uh, it's just in a different fashion. Um, Next point about, uh, can I use responsive ads in DV360 as I would do in GDN? Uh, well, no, in this case, <laughs> but you can use dynamic creatives. So I already answered this one a bit. Uh, can I run uh, native ads in GDN as I can in DV? No, but you can run text ads. And there's, uh, there's some differences there. I think the native ads, uh, they give you a little bit uh, of, of that flexibility to play around with some visuals and some, some text as well. Uh, and now uh, you have uh, native ads with video as well available in DV. Also something uh, that you can that you can play around with. So yeah, the second one is on inventory and frequency management. Now obviously there's a long list of, of uh, topics that we uh, that we ca that we get is there's frequently asked questions. Uh, we're just trying to uh, cherry pick a few obviously that we can cover in this in this deck. Uh, first one, well obviously you can guess it. We've touched on this. Can I set up private deals with publishers through GDN? Well, no, but you can do so in DV. So uh, also uh, touched on in the, in the considerations. Um, can I manage frequency capping? Now, this is, this is one that we get uh, quite a lot. Uh, what's good to remember is, as said, there are two separate platforms. Uh, you can monitor frequency, but then as said, you would need, for example, campaign manager to do that to facilitate that process so that you can deduplicate uh, de uh, conversions, that you can run attribution reports. Uh, so yeah, bear that in mind. Can I run Gmail ads in DV360? Well, yes, this was recently added to DV360. And for uh, for those out there that are interested in how how you do that, I, uh, there's, a, there's a blog post on, 
our website and dqna.com that, that touches on this topic particularly. So if you're yeah, if you want to explore that, uh, you will check it out. Um, the last one is on audience and bidding. I'll post the blog, blog post in so, a minute, by the way. I'll post it in the chat if, ah, you, sure. if you're interested. Cool. Uh, can I use Google Analytics remarketing list in DV260? Uh, yes, but you can with, uh, but only with GA360. So keep that in mind. GA360 is the premium version of Google Analytics. Uh, well, there's, so there's a difference with GDN there. Uh, whereas GDN is quite natively integrated uh, with uh, Google Analytics, uh, you can easily push through lists uh, to uh, Google Ads and GDN as well. Uh, so there's a difference with uh, DV360. Um, can I bid on cost per click in DV260 as I do in GDN? Um, yes, you can, uh, but only on display for now uh, through open auction only. Uh, now, the side note, uh, and, and I was talking about this at the beginning of the deck, I was saying I, I will get back to this. Uh, that's exactly this point. Uh, what I wanted to mention here is that um, maybe you've heard about this recently, but um, there's there's an update within DB260, which is uh, uh, outcome-based uh, bidding. So, and there's actually lots of information on that in, in the Google Help Center if you're, if you're curious. Uh, so, uh, we'll touch on that briefly. Um, but yeah, bear in mind that nowadays you can do that. Uh, you can also uh, do that based on cost per acquisition. So it's it's still it's quite new, it's quite fresh. So um, so that you are aware. Um, can I bid on VCPM in Google Ads as I would do in DV two sixty? Well, yes, you can bid uh, by cost per thousand view impressions. Um, so especially interesting for your uh, for your prospecting campaigns if you want to run campaigns that have uh, more focus on, on on viewability it's definitely something that you can yeah you can play around with so yeah now we have arrived at the questions so uh, feel free to drop in uh, your questions uh, in the chat so that we can uh, go through them all right thank you Daniel um Chat was pretty active already. Um, we'll start at the beginning. So we have had a few questions. Uh, if people can get the uh, PowerPoint presentation after the webinar, um, you should get them. We read a follow-up email to everyone who agreed to the uh, to the GDPR constraints because we kind of need to do that. Um, but uh, yes, you will receive the presentation if you agree to the GDPR. Um, if not. You can also reach us, uh, reach out to us to to Daniel at DQNA or Fabian at DQNA.com directly, and we'll send you the presentation. That's no problem at all. Um, PowerPoint would be nice. Hey, Fabian, nice. Thank you. Um, the YouTube channel link was also posted, so we're also going to uh, to post the video in our YouTube channel. So you've got enough time to to go through it again, to listen to it again, to look at the features, to Evaluate if GDN or DB360 is going to be the right tool for you. Um, off topic, can you guys share any video link uh, on how to set up YouTube campaigns in DB360? I don't have anything in mind right now. I don't know if you do, Daniel. Okay, I think, can you repeat that, uh, Fabian? Um, can you guys share any video link uh, on how to set up YouTube campaigns in DB360? Yeah, I don't, I don't think we have that available, uh, to be honest. Okay, but Shamim, if you uh, want to know how that works, please let us know. Please reach out to us, uh, preferably exactly. to Daniel directly. Um, exactly. He can easily let you know how it works. Exactly. Um, Thanks for that. Exactly. Can you send the presentation? As I said, we're going to do that. Um, another question from Joram Bruins. Um, thank you for that. Why would you run YouTube ads via DB360 instead of Google Ads? So, so uh, thanks for that question, first of all. Uh, so, uh, the main topic here is because you, you want to... Uh, so, I've explained media consolidation. So when you're looking into things like frequency capping, imagine you have uh, other 
uh, running uh, and you, you, you're running them within Diva 260, you have a publisher deal, for example, with the Telegraph where you run a video, but you also have a TrueView ad uh, uh, running within that same uh, promo promotional campaign. Um, it's, it's good to have them uh, in one platform so you can uh, uh, frequency cap uh, across them actually so that that's i think that's a major concern for for doing that uh in in, in one platform actually whereas otherwise there will be uh, uh a campaign running in in, in google uh running a part of that campaign in so yeah i hope okay you're breaking up a little Danny. i see that Daniel, are you still there? All right, we've got a few additional questions. Another one from AW Yonego. Is it possible to use settings such as paper conversion in DB360? Uh, so this, I think, touches on the... Uh, um, based by, uh, so um, so this is a different, a totally uh, used to be in the, in the platform, it's, it used to be always CPM based, so you can actually bid on cost per acquisition in V360, but, but bear in mind, there's some, there's some so um, what I'm actually going to say, feel free to have a look at the help center, uh, what it says on outcome based buying, uh, because it's a topic on its own, so I'm not going to touch it in, 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 in an elaborate uh, fashion right now, but feel free to have a look into it. If you have any specific questions, um, then uh, as said earlier, feel free to drop us an, an email uh, so we can have that, that separate conversation about uh, that topic. I hope it answers uh, your question. All right, thank you for that. Then we've got another question from John. Um, I want to know if there is a minimum time recommended in order to get good results in the campaign, and if we can get different results in the branding campaign or performance. Getting the full set through the uh, through the groggy connection, I think. Can you repeat? Okay, okay. So uh, absolutely, I want to know if there is a minimum time recommended in order to get good results in the campaign and if we can get different results in a branding campaign or a performance campaign. Yeah, I mean, definitely. I would uh, I would, I would, definitely give it uh, 14 days to be able to, to fully understand what's happening. And if, if you're new to this, uh, just to get a, to get a sense of, uh, uh, of, of, of what's happening, how users are reacting to the content that you're pushing and take it from there. But make sure to uh, give it some time for the campaign to actually uh, yeah, gather the data so that you can act upon that, uh, especially when you're not starting at the beginning with, uh, with huge budgets and you're in the exploration phase. Um, so give it definitely a trial run. And when you compare a branding and performance campaigns, so yeah, definitely there's, there's different KPIs that you wanna, uh, wanna look into. Uh, as, as, as said earlier in, in the deck, you can look at VCPM for branding. Uh, you can look at maximize uh, quality views, quality video views, for example, nowadays for, for your video campaigns in the, in the branding layer. Uh, for performance campaigns, you can focus on, uh, uh, yeah, you, um, uh, cost per acquisition, for example. Uh, so yeah, it's there. There's definitely different KPIs to you. You want to uh, to look into. Yeah, I hope it answered your question. Otherwise, feel free to uh, to clarify in the chat. Okay, thank you. Um, another question or another follow up from Shamim. I've had no idea that it is possible to set up YouTube campaigns in DB360. The client wants that. Um, so just curious yeah, if sure. it's possible. It is possible. Shamim, if you uh, have any additional questions, also pr please reach out. We're more than more than happy to help you how to set it up. Yeah. Um, sure. Another question from Alvaro. Um, would it be possible to create and update a video campaign through any kind of API? 
That's a good one. Sorry, I missed the first part. <laughs> Would it be possible to create and update a video campaign through any kind of API? And, oh, sorry, I didn't really get that. Uh, right on it, or if if it's easier, please shoot us a mail too, because it seems to be uh, a more it seems to be a, like a more more advanced uh, query. Um, all right, another question from Sofian El Muden. Um, which bidding option in DB three sixty would you say is most similar to CPC bidding in Google Ads? A bidding option similar to um, CPC bidding. CPC um, in Google Ads. Yeah, so you have uh, you can optimize uh, as well on on CPC bid in in DV360, uh, just so that you are aware of that. Um, and so so there's there's two things actually. You can uh, bid on CPM model while you're optimizing towards uh, CPC in in DV360. Uh, but nowadays you can also uh, activate outcome-based buying, which is actually buying on a CPC. Uh, so, so, so there's definitely uh, uh, ways to do that. Uh, yeah, I hope it answers your question. Maybe I, I'm, I'm not fully understanding your, um, uh, your, 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 your perspective on this. All right, thank you. Another question from Ava. Does GDN always perform better than DB360 for performance-based campaigns with CPA goals? What do you think is the reason? Uh, what do you think are the reasons for this performance difference? Uh, so that's that's a good one, actually. That's also in one of the questions that we uh, usually get. Uh, so what I can tell you is that uh, don't um, take it for granted that if you dive into DV360 uh, and you've been doing performance campaigns in GDN for a while now, that you're going to get that ex that uh, that same number uh, or that you're even going to um, outperform what you've been doing in GDN. Uh, because sometimes that's not the case. Because if, if you look at, for example, the inventory that you've been getting in GDN, Take it as an example that it's, uh, as I explained, that it's mixed levels of quality, meaning there's also uh, lots of well, cheap inventory out there. Um, whereas in DV360, um, you're, you're potentially trying to, uh, to buy uh, inventory that has um, a bit higher quality in some cases, so it's going to cost you more, um, especially if you consider uh, inventory that you are going to get access to that's otherwise not reachable through GDN. Uh, perhaps some some publishers that that um, have their inventory available through DV360. Uh, so there's going to be a shift in CPMs. Uh, imagine you, you're paying fifty cents uh, in your GDN campaigns. If if you look at, if you look at that, for example, obviously you're focusing in GDN on on CPA, right? But then in DV360 you run a performance campaign, uh, and then you see that hey, uh, if you compare the two, you might find that your CPM is one year eighty in DV360 for your performance campaign. That's already going to impact your 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 CPA, right? Uh, so just be aware of that. Uh, that um, uh, if if you're going to flat compare it to each other. Uh, by performance, um, that's not really a fair comparison. I think that's my point here. Uh, yeah. Okay, following up on that, um, I was recently told that GDN remarketing campaigns also have access to Google and other ad exchange traffic similar to DV360. What would be the benefit of moving our remarketing campaigns from GDN to DV360? Would the main benefit be that DV360 offers more advanced dynamic ads through Google Studio? Custom, for example, custom layouts and decisioning uh, based on flood tags. Definitely a good point, indeed. As touched on in, in, in this deck as well, that's, that's a consideration you, 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 you want. If you want to uh, yeah, up your game on creatives, you want to do more advanced segmentation. Um, and for some out there, you, want, you even want to look into uh, explore Google, Google Cloud. Um, uh, that, that's definitely uh, something to uh, to consider. Yeah. Um, what's What's good to mention is that Rubicon is also connected to uh, uh, GDN, 
if uh, if that's something that you're you're interested in. Um, I don't think there's there's many more out there that are that are nowadays connected as exchanges to to, to GTN campaigns. Uh, but I think I think it's Rubicon. Um, yeah. I hope it answers your question. All right. I think we have elaborated on it pretty much already, but uh, what is the difference between remarketing and DV360 with other platforms? So we, I think we've already talked about GDN a lot, mm -hmm. but for example, Peter Hill. Uh, so uh, imagine we've talked about the floodlight tag, right? So one of the, uh, I think one of the benefits from using the floodlight tag is that you can, uh, can get very granular. You can se segment quite well in terms of all the parameters that, you, that you're trying to use. Uh, well, we've set the connection with Google Studio, for example, for your rich media di dynamic creatives. Uh, aside from that, uh, there's obviously the, the, the connection uh, to the audience data that lives within the platform itself, obviously. So your first party data, uh, your CRM data, for example. So there's a good connection with all that for your remarketing layer. Uh, so I think that th those are already quite, uh, quite strong uh, uh, benefits. All right, um, another question, where can we get the PPT? Um, we'll either send them to you via mail if you gave your consent on GDPR or you have to reach out to us directly and we'll, we're, happy, we'll ha we're happy to send it to you. Um, another question, could you expand on uh, outcome-based bidding and where to find it in the platform? I can't seem to find it. So that's, so that's something um, you need to activate first on advertiser level. Uh, but as said, what would be good if, if you're completely new to this, um, uh, explore the information in the, in the help center from, uh, uh, from, uh, from DV360 or, or, just, or just Google it basically, uh, <laughs> to keep it really simple. Um, uh, yeah, it would be good to read on that first. And then uh, if you think, hey, this, is, this might be interesting, then, then let's, uh, let's, have a, let's have a chat. All right, uh, you have my consent. Um, that's great to know. We'll we'll make sure to send you the presentation. <laughs> okay, I think that's it for questions. Um, thank you, Daniel, for the very insightful session. Thanks everyone for tuning in. Um, as I said, we'll follow up with uh, sending out the presentations, and we'll also upload the video to DV360 uh, to to DV360, obviously to YouTube shortly and you can find it on our YouTube channel. Um, until the next webinar, um, have a great day, have a great rest of the week, and um, hope to see you soon. All right, thanks everyone. Thanks for listening in. Bye-bye.